try this and go through a review of how to add force vectors. You've added distance vectors ad nauseum or a lot, <laughs> starting back with traverse calculations. Uh, and uh, you'll need to continue to add them for all kinds of different reasons, mostly to get back home when you go out on a trip. When you use your GPS, but force vectors you've been adding and dealing with uh, since you were young, believe it or not. Otherwise, you wouldn't be standing up. And we're going to try to do this using, once again, the bamboo tablet. And pretty soon, next time, we're going to type this. So we don't want that ad in. We want the review here. And we're going to start the inking here. So you know, of course, about concurrent forces. concurrent forces. You add them tip to tail and they go through and the line of action of the resultant the line of action of the resultant goes through the point of concurrency or the common point that all the forces meet at. It is a 2D it is a 3D concept. Both We'll be looking graphically at the 2D and mathematically at the 2D and the 3D. And graphically at the 3D, I'm sorry. All right, so concurrent. You then have a subset of the next kind of step up that you've been dealing with is parallel non-concurrent forces. In other words, Pretty much all your gravity loads on a structure, theoretically, are parallel, acting down. And how do you add those up? You add them tip to tail, but because of the sum of the moments rule, the, their line of action is a line parallel to the other lines other lines but based at a point somewhere based on a weighted average in other words if you have these parallel non-concurrent forces right they're parallel you're going to add them tip to tail but in all reality it's going to be based on a weighted average of location along some defined line that being the perpendicular line to the forces and the result in this like in this one is visually at some place like that in other words it's a weighted average the easiest one of course is something if it's that's a bad beam you got one there and one there right in the middle you'd have one here that's twice as big exactly in the center that's a weighted average calculation I mentioned before that that would come back so those are parallel non-concurrent forces. You add them tip to tail, but the line of action goes through, the, the line of action is going to be parallel to the other lines of action, but it is going to be based on a weighted average, and we'll see the different ways that that can be calculated. If, in fact, the forces are in the same direction, that's pretty easy. If they're not, it's also easy, it's, but the mathematics looks a little different. So that's what we have. So far, you have Concurrent forces you add tip to tail. Non-concurrent forces you also add tip to tail. But the line of action goes parallel to the other lines of actions and it is based on a weighted average. We'll look at the mathematics to review the mathematics once. Good use of lists. Uh, that's how you calculate the line of action. We know from the rule of transmissibility it can be plenty, placed anywhere on that line of action. Just like we know from the rule of transmissibility for a set of concurrent points, that result needs to go through the point of concurrency, but it can be anywhere along that line of action, so you can use their trans rule of transmissibility. All right, finally, not finally, but next to finally, we then also have something called coplanar, we'll do this coplanar, coplanar, and actually there's really no difference, again, mathematically between coplanar and non Coplanar non-parallel, non-concurrent forces.
which means, of course, if they're on a plane, there's at least three of them. There's got to be at least three because two forces on a plane, in other words, two forces here, they're always going to be concurrent about a point right down here. So you have to have systems of three. And there's very often you're going to see there's going to be a lot of three force systems right, that are concurrent. Any um, simply supported beam with one load on it is going to be three concurrent forces. You'll see that, that it has to work out, but okay. So they're going to be at least three, but what? how do you add them? You add them, once again, tip to tail. Right? You add the x's, you add the y's, and you add the z's. Or if you think about it vectorially, you add things going in the i direction, the j direction, and the k direction. So coplanar, non-parallel, non-concurrent forces, you add them tip to tail. And the line of action, the line of action is a line of action that causes the same moment as the sum of the moments of the forces. So the line of action is a line of action that causes an equal moment. All right, so there's the three definitions. Now, again, they're 2D and they're 3D concepts. I will type these out and repost them. Uh, though this isn't getting not bad, I'm going to point out that I'm using a white uh, bamboo, a, a, a tablet, a digitizer, old stuff in engineering. To tell you the truth, it's making its it's making its way back from the wayback machine. I am using that. I am using, however, not any special software. I'm using, well, it's special. It's expensive and it's Microsoft, but it is PowerPoint, and I'm using the inking tools here. So, um, and what I'm going to point out finally to use up these last couple of minutes, I'm now going to put in. If I can, I'm going to show you what also a tablet will do is I could learn to do this. Concurrent forces. All right. That's what's coming. Believe it or not, it's there. All right. It came in Vegas. It's uh, the concept of tablet computing. This is just Microsoft Windows 7's recognizer. I, when I insert it, it won't know what to do with it because it doesn't know what to do with it. If I do something like this, however, insert a piece of text box from here to here, and now I write concurrent forces. It knows where to put it. Okay, concurrent forces. And so concurrent forces, well, what do we know? Concurrent forces, we add tip to tail. Works for me. Don't know where it went, however. There it is. Doesn't quite have the tail. Let's do the L. Knows the L. Insert. So we're going to go back through that. And we may work pretty quickly. Um, and uh, this only works for you if you have a pen interface, I would say. It's kind of hard, but a pen interface would be something like a, I don't know, maybe you got a Wiimote. All right, so we can finish out the 10 minutes. The scribbles, I purposely did not do drawings on this because you're going to have to be doing the drawings in class. But here are your three ways to simplify the first three systems of forces. First are concurrent forces. 2, 3, 4, 15, 97, don't care. You add them tip to tail. You also add them, as you remember, with lists or a calculator program or whatever you want, a matrices. Uh, but you add them tip to tail in a graphic sense and a mathematical sense, come to think of it. Parallel non-concurrent forces, I'm sorry, parallel non-concurrent forces are parallel are forces that are parallel. Usually you can think about almost all point loads caused by gravity of something st sitting on something as being parallel. You add them tip to tail and you simplify them by moving that resultant vector to a point somewhere so that that line of action is parallel to the other lines of actions based on a weighted average. We'll see what that weighted average is. It's quite easy if they're in the same direction. Your eye will solve the problem. It is a centroid calculation, if you remember back me talking about that. And finally, coplanar, non-parallel, 
non-concurrent forces, you also add them tip to tail. But their line of action is a line of action that cause an equal moment to the other, to the moments of those forces. That's it. That's how it's simplified. We will cover it in one day and there will be plenty of problems. And those problems are problems you should be able to do very quickly, very fast, very efficiently. They're supposed to be soon the cat and dog thing. Thanks for listening.